According to Einstein's equivalence between energy and mass, quarks contain 99% of the mass energy on planet Earth. If all the planetary quarks were to transform their 99% of mass into pure energy, it would lead to a Big Bang explosion equivalent to the most powerful explosions in the known universe. In early 1964, Gelman proposes to the world the existence of three new fundamental entities he calls quarks. They're more like little planetary systems. All the positive charge and virtually all the mass is concentrated in a tiny nucleus. Now, what are the quarks? Are they actually real objects? Well, my experimental friends are making a search for them in all sorts of places. His three quarks could combine in different ways to reproduce the properties of this enormous particle zoo. It would simplify, organize, predict. It was a great scientific advance. When Murray Gelman's three hypothesized quarks were finally found, humans learned that they were made of the two lightest ones, the up and down quark, which combine in triads to form the protons and neutrons that make up all the atomic nuclei of our planet. If the outer boundary of a hydrogen atom, where the electron is found, were enlarged to be two miles wide, about the size of a city, the single proton in its nucleus would be the size of a golf ball. It's here we find elements at their most elemental, because every nucleus contains protons, and it's the number of protons that determines what kind of element the atom is. The number of protons is called the atomic number, and it's the fundamental organizing principle of every table of the elements. All the other heavier particles in the universe contain the third strange quark, which has 15 times more mass energy than the sum of our lighter up and down quarks. Strange quarks do not exist naturally on this planet, but account for the ultra-dense core of pulsars and the dark ultra-heavy matter of the galactic halo. It is precisely this third massive strange quark that Brookhaven's particle accelerator is now producing in huge quantities in its collisions. When the cover of atomic nuclei are broken in these collisions, strange quarks are liberated and form a liquid explosive that is boosted by their large energy mass. This formation of strange quarks is called a strangelet and has an enormous attractive power. To put into perspective its huge mass energy, a single spoon of strangelet weighs one billion tons. That is three times the mass of the entire human population. A strangelet's gargantuan attractive power could suck in an entire planetary mass within a few days. Physicist Franz Wilczek called the explosive conversion of ordinary quark matter into a strangelet an Ice-9 extinction. The term Ice-9 was borrowed from Kurt Vonnegut's satirical book Cat's Cradle, in which an American physicist discovers a similar strange liquid that freezes the planet into ice and extinguishes all planetary life. In theory, strangelets have the power to devour the Earth. Millions of times heavier than gold, they have a gravitational force so great that nothing can resist it. All Everything that that strangelet touches changes into a strangelet. They have finally done it. Brookhaven's Collider is now distilling strange liquid explosive, a substance that all the nuclear industry safety reports considered impossible to manufacture on planet Earth. I've never been so confident, though, of making a prediction as when uh, I was called to sit on a panel about the possibility of an accelerator turning on and, and ending the world. Uh, predicting that it won't is very safe, because if your prediction is wrong... <laughs> 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 
Why would nuclear physicists, a group of seemingly normal human beings, backed by all the resources of our society and with the support of our governments, the hype of the press, and the applause of the entire population, move forward with experiments that pose such a clear risk to our lives? A technological civilization caters first to the needs of machines. Believers in technology seem willing to accept risks as necessary sacrifices to achieve the holy grail of future progress. An ICE-9 reaction requires only a microscopic critical mass of strange liquid to explode the Earth, and that critical mass is within the reach of our Big Bang machine. the inventor of dynamite. Nobel continued the ideological bias against the sciences of information and life, expressly denying the concession of his Nobel Prize to any biologist who believed in evolution. As the largest producer of explosives and guns in the 19th century, Alfred Nobel's nickname was the Merchant of Death. Accordingly, he was at least on two fronts, one of the founders of the military-industrial complex. On the one hand, he established the first multinational corporation that sold weapons to all contenders in a war. His original company has remained, after a few mergers, a leading worldwide weapons manufacturer. He quipped to his girlfriend, for whom he had reluctantly established the Nobel Peace Prize, my weapons will end war sooner than peace congresses. On the day two armies can annihilate each other in a second, all civilized nations will surely recoil with horror and disband their troops. But first, both sides would need massive amounts of his weapons. So during World War I and II, Nobel Industries kept piling profits and corpses 